Hi, my name's Ben. Today I'm going to be talking about Lagrange's equation and how it can help us solve single degree of freedom vibration questions. So normally, when we're confronted with a question like this, we jump straight to Newton's second law. We draw our free body diagrams of all the components, we work out kinematic relationships between those components, then we apply F equals MA and get our equation in motion. Lagrange's equation gives us an alternative method, which can save us a lot of time for more complicated systems. So it's important to note at this, at this point that Newton's equations, whilst they look incredibly different to Lagrange's, they actually deal with the same physical principles, just written in a very different form mathematically. So whilst Newton's equation is interested in force, some of the forces equals mass times acceleration, Lagrange's equation is interested in the energy of the system, the kinetic energy and the potential energy. And this has a couple of key advantages. Firstly, force is a vector, whereas energy is a scalar. So that means it's a lot easier to transfer between different coordinate systems when we're dealing with a scalar, Lagrangians, than a vector, Newtons. The other key advantage that we're going to be making the most use of is that Newton's method requires us to solve for all the forces in between the different components, even if we're not interested in what they are. Whereas Lagrange's equation, we can totally bypass that step and jump straight to the kinetic energy of the system. And that saves us a lot of time. So, that said, let's have a look at the equation. So here's Lagrange's formula. We've got L, and we've got Q, and then some time derivatives, and some partial derivatives. So what does that mean? Well, L is called the Lagrangian. It's composed of the kinetic energy minus the potential energy of the system. QI simply represents a general coordinate, so the single coordinate that can fully define the system. You could call it x, y, theta, whatever you want. In this case, we're going to be looking at x. Okay, so let's get stuck into an example. I always find it easier when I have something that I can see and move to help me conceptualize the question. So here I'm building a system which will vibrate and we can analyze using Lagrange's equation. So drawing a free body diagram, which is always very important, here's what we get. So here's where we're headed with this problem. We've got to find an expression of L in terms of x and x dot, take partial derivatives, and substitute into Lagrange's equation and solve. So first things first, finding L. L is t minus v, where t is the kinetic energy. So t is comprised of the rotational and the translational components of the kinetic energy of the wheels and also the rotational kinetic energy of this member here. To find that energy, I'm going to consider the rotation about point O, a zero velocity point. Remember, when we're finding rotational kinetic energies, we either consider the rotation about a zero velocity point or rotation about the center of mass and the velocity of the center of mass. However, we have a problem. At the moment, our kinetic energy is in terms of VA, omega A, and omega OB. Ultimately, we want to get them all in terms of VA, which is also X dot. So here I'm calculating kinematic relationships between the components to work out a relationship between VA, omega A, and omega OB. To get reasonable relationships between these quantities, I'm having to assume that the system is only vibrating a small amount. So, sine theta approximately equals 0, and cos theta approximately equals 1. Thus, VB approximately equals VA. So, substituting all those kinematic relationships in, we can finally find an expression for our kinetic energy, all in terms of VA, or X dot. Next, we're interested in our potential energy, and that comes from the springs K1 and K2. So remember, our kinetic energy is half times K, times the distance from the unstretched length squared. So, we've got T and we've got V. Now we can find L. L is simply T minus V. So substituting those values in, here's what we get for L. So to substitute into Lagrange's equation, we need to take the partial derivative with respect to x and also with respect to x dot. Performing those operations, here's what we get. So now we can substitute those equations 
back into our Lagrange's equation. But we come up against a problem. Our equation has a coefficient of x dot, a coefficient of x, and also a constant term at the end. Now, normally, vibration questions don't have that constant term. To resolve this, we look back at our free body diagram and consider the case when the velocity is zero, or when it's in equilibrium. So some of the forces equals ma equals zero. The only forces acting in the x direction are the forces due to the springs. And we get this expression, which we can substitute straight back in and turns out to be our constant term at the end. So finally, we can write our equation in motion. Now normally what we do is we write it as x double dot times mass equivalent plus x times k equivalent. And then we state our expressions for mass equivalent and k equivalent. We can use this to find system properties like the natural frequency, which is simply the square root of the equivalent k divided by the okay, equivalent mass. So to quickly recap, we found the kinetic energy and the potential energy of our system in terms of x dot and x. Then we substituted into our Lagrangian equation and we got our equation in motion at the end. Remember, Lagrange's equation is helpful for complicated systems with lots of interacting parts, but it's probably easier to stick with Newton's method when you just have simple systems with only a couple of parts. So I hope this helps you with your final exams. All the best.